A, a pleasant good day, everybody. The Phillies rung that bell and got that win yesterday after a key pinch hit by someone that should have been starting in the first place, as we talked about on Chasing the Pennant last night with Shane and Rob from Always Next Year Podcast Network. Please check that out. If you haven't checked out our podcast there already, they're brilliant and wonderful, and we have a lot of great people that work for us there. So please check those out. But Adam Hazley, yeah, coming up clutch. But oh, as they said on the post game. I know. Also, we hope uh, first and foremost, Kyle Garlic's able to recover from his oblique strain or whatever he did to injure his oblique um, as quick as possible. But nonetheless, he shouldn't have been starting. He has three hits, uh, as Ricky Bo was saying. He's like three for twenty-one or something like that. He hasn't been good since coming over from the Dodgers, where people thought maybe he was more of a late bloomer, a guy that just got buried behind the Dodgers, including myself. Well, I was wrong on that. He just seems like a journeyman type player that's just average at best. Where you put Quinn in, uh, who's looked pretty solid um, playing this year, but has struggled hitting recently. Where when you look at uh, Hayes, as they like to call him, Purple Hayes, uh, recently, even if you go back, uh, when you look at MLB.com, if you look back at his last 30 games, which is 54 at bats, the guy's almost hitting 300 at 296. His last 70, he's hitting 421. So, with seven RBIs. So, he's looked really good. Um, you could have put Quinn in because Quinn's also looked good in center. That wasn't my dilemma there. My dilemma is what the hell was Kyle Garlick in for them in the first place? As they said on the post game, that didn't make any sense. As Ricky Bo said, he didn't question Girardi that much this year, second guess him. That was a, a movie second guessed him on, and you should have. 100%. Now, Quinn in his last seven is struggling. He's only hitting .53. Last 15 is 200 and 229. So I'm going to say it again. I still believe Adam Hazley is a lot better than Roman Quinn. I think Adam Hazley is a starting center fielder in this league. I think Roman Quinn's a platoon player that really should be platooning, not necessarily because if he gets hot, his skill can't be a starter. His body can't be a starter, unfortunately. He just gets banged up. If he plays too much, he just gets injured. So you can't, now Hazley has got banged up, but that's been stuff that, the only thing that really Quinn couldn't control, you can't control running into the wall. I mean, he has a lot of injuries you can't control either, but Hayes has a couple injuries that are more just those freak injuries early in his career. Quinn has had some big injuries that seem to have lingered since and have affected him in terms of being able to get his body to the full physical peak he wants it to be at to avoid injuries. I hope for him that happens, but in order for that to happen, I don't think it's smart overplaying him. That's what I disagree with the Phillies on. I think with certain players, you have to be able to balance what's good for them and what's good for your team, and I don't think the Phillies have done a good job at doing so with Roman Quinn. But anyway, moving on from that, we got a nice... 4-1 4-1 to one win yesterday. Jake Arrieta battled through it. He also then messed up his hamstring, but said he himself isn't overly concerned about it. So we'll see what happens there, if that's something he's able to pitch through again, similar to the uh, issues he's had with his arm and elbow yes- or yesterday, last year. So hopefully because we're depleted at starter, not because like, obviously Jake's not the flashy special Jake he used to be, but he has battled through starts for us and got us through five quite a few times this year and has pitched very well against the Mets so uh, you have a guy that has battled in a depleted system of starting pitching right now you just have Eflin Wheeler who's back and is actually pitching today so that's great to see you have Vince and then you have Nola so otherwise you could use Parker who normally goes a couple innings as an opener so we really do need Arietta to come back just for the simple premise of we don't have anybody. Uh, the other starting pitcher that we could have used in this situation in Connor Seabold because, yeah, Pavetta got traded to Boston, but Pavetta at this point, I wouldn't have wanted to try to try him out again. He's another Velasquez that we just keep beating a dead horse with. I mean, both of those guys, especially Vinny, are some of the nicest, most genuine people. You can see it in their interviews. They just unfortunately can't get going on the field. But Connor Seabold, who we traded to Boston that I liked, I did a video on a couple months ago, if you want to check that out on the channel, 
He's a pitcher that just knows how to locate the zone, limit walks, limit damage. He might get into trouble at times, similar to how Jake did, but he usually gets out of it. We don't have him because he's in Boston. So, Glenn Tack did not set this team up for depth issues at all, especially at pitching, but really in general. Because you once you go through a couple people... You're screwed, and you banked on people, like I said, that you could, thought maybe, and the keywords maybe, could be late bloomers because you thought maybe they buried like a garlic and, uh, well, Neil Walker, who we ended up cutting, which I didn't necessarily agree with because he looked a little bit better, especially than a guy like a garlic who's in our system still right now. Uh, so the Phillies are making some interesting, and before the season, and during, made some interesting decisions. Obviously, having Francisco... Uh, Liriano, if we kept him, would have looked a lot more pretty at this current structure. I mean, he ended up opting out, but if you kept him and maybe convinced him to come back at a certain point, like a bunch of players have decided to do so after opting out initially, which has been another interesting and uh, strange thing to follow in this 2020 season. But the the issue that the Phillies need to figure out is depth. They need to figure out who needs to get put in into what situation, because that's the one thing that, on top of what Ricky Bo said, that he doesn't second-guess Girardi on much. I second-guess him on a little bit more than him, I think, because, one, he takes out starters a little bit too early. I understand maybe analytics say don't put him in three through the order. Well, what analytics say put in anybody that's not Blake Parker or Joe Romero in our bullpen? Now, Hector Neris did look... Joe Joe Romero. But Hector Neris did look significantly better yesterday. So if he can start showing that fastball like he did to counteract his splitter, then start throwing him in more. But he needs to show that time and time again to show that he's confident in that. And then I'm right back on the Hector train because I definitely fell off of it. So... Uh, we need to be able to do things here. I mean, Garrett Clevenger now is back in the big leagues. Uh, he's a lefty from Oregon. He's a guy that can be solid but might struggle uh, locating at first. But I do like uh, what I've seen from following him in the minors and watching him. But we'll see what can happen there. Phelps, unfortunately, hasn't been as good in workman, but... You just need your depth to perform for you to continue to win these ball games. Uh, yesterday, you could argue that the depth did perform for us because you didn't start Adam Hazley, and then he ended up getting a key hit, and that's because of Garlic getting injured. As Ricky boasted on the post game, who knows what would have happened? And we never wish anyone to get injured, but it was very unlucky, as he said, for Kyle Garlic, but kind of lucky for Adam Hazley and the Phillies because he came through with a hit, and Garlic's really been struggling. So. Again, we the, the key here in order to win when you're lacking you're lacking depth and you keep getting depleted by injuries is to from the forefront make the right decision. And I don't think Girardi did that yesterday. It ended up getting corrected, I guess, by the baseball gods, because I don't think garlic would have been pinch hit for if his oblique wasn't we wasn't feeling it a little bit. But You need to make that right decision in the first place. What the hell is he in the game for in the first place? He's our most struggling outfielder. Neil Walker should have been kept on the team over him. So there's a lot of things that still need to be ironed out in terms of the decision-making with this ball club. And that's from the top, very much so, from Middleton to Glentac. And then still also from the manager room, Joe Girardi needs to make right decisions from the forefront and then not putting guys that are struggling big time to, already. Like there's no, there's just no reason to put a garlic in there when he's struggling. He's it's a righty pitcher. It's one thing if there was a lefty in, but there's no, the, the, there's just as Nick Wright would say, "What the hell are you doing?" <laughs> so the hell you doing, man? There's no, there's no point at putting them in. So. I really do love how we looked. Another positive I must point out is I love Rafael Marcon, our young catcher. I'm obsessed with that dude as much as Girardi is. He's great at fielding. He got some hits already. He had another hard one in his debut that he got out on. And then I really do like how Knapp Nap got another hit yesterday. He was one for two. Uh, I do really like, and he also drew a walk, so we know he's seeing the ball really well still. Still hitting above 300 at 341. So, he's been doing good as our backup. I do like how much he's impressed. We also talked about that on Chasing the Pennant. 
So those are the guys that have impressed. Now, my key contributor, obviously, from yesterday's ball game, my star of the game, is Adam Hazley coming in for the pinch hit. And then also, Diddy Gregorius jumping on a first pitch changeup to slam it off the sign and almost break the sign out there. That was beautiful to see. He's another guy. You must sign him. Get that ink going. Sign Diddy Gregorius. And you also must, when he comes back, Sign JT Real Muto, unless if you're confident, which still makes the trade mute and a terrible trade. So you're going to have to make Mark Cannon Knapp the best platoon in the league in order to even let anyone get over that. But no, you must re-sign JT, because otherwise it just mitigates the trade you made and makes it look like you have no idea what you're doing. So you must re-sign JT, you must re-sign Diddy, because he's a heart and soul of this team in his first season. And that that's a guy you just love having on your club. And he can also be a guy that if he starts, which I don't envision him doing, but slowing down a bit at the shortstop position, can easily play second base. And I don't even envision him doing that. So he's a perfect guy to keep until Bryson Stott's ready to get rolling in the big leagues. Uh, which, if we keep having injuries, could be fairly soon. Uh, but I do like how we're kind of figuring stuff out in terms of certain individual players. Like, Arietta hasn't had his stuff as much until he got injured yesterday. He's been able to just kind of find a way to battle through it. I do like being able to see that. I also need to see Zach Eflin kind of start pitching like he did at the beginning of the season and the end of last year. He's been a little struggle bunny this year, and that's not something we need right now. But we won the first game of the series, which was, in my opinion, the harder game to win because one, Porcello usually pitches us pretty decent, and then two, we had Jake, who we knew needed to battle, but I personally thought we were going to win that game. I actually put it in on our Patreon BPAL Picks betting site. Check that out as well if you haven't done so already. You can There's different subscription levels there that you can subscribe for to get your betting odds on more exclusive picks rather than stuff that ain't going to win you too much money. But the Phillies were able to win because Jake battled, and then they, when, when you see a pitcher go down like that, you obviously want to pick him up and finish that out and win that game for him. You don't want to see the team flounder and lose because of that. So that was very, very, very nice to see as it put Arietta at 4-4 four and four on the season. Now we have Zach Wheeler going against DeGrom coming off of his uh, nail issue. So We'll see how he looks tonight. That's going to be a great pitching matchup, followed by another great pitching matchup of Seth Lugo and Aaron Nola for Wednesday and Thursday. So have a great, safe, and pleasant day, everybody. Let's go. Phillies continue ringing that bell and make the right decisions from the forefront. So peace out, everybody. Go Phillies. Ring that bell. Peace out.